full self-driving is one of those things that you obviously have a very intimate relationship with. You're one of the OG testers. You've been doing this for a long time. You're based out of the California region. You make incredible content around full self-driving. Yeah, talk to, maybe talk to us a little bit about what your overall experience has been, just being a beta tester, seeing it sort of evolve from where you had it to where it is now. Um, and then for those on YouTube that are not familiar with Omar, whole Mars catalog, you can find them on, on Twitter. We'll make sure we post a link in the comment section below. Uh, he, he, what, what's your uh, description? You're a part-time Tesla, part-time uh, shitty <laughs> comedian or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you got it. So, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I think, I mean, FSD has been just really incredible to watch progress. Um, when we we met Elon in 2020 and did an interview with him at uh, one of the houses he had at the time, it was owned by Willy Wonka. Um, I mean, not Willy Wonka, the actor who plays him. Gene Wilder. Yeah. Yes, Gene Wilder. <laughs> and um, so you know, I was asking him about FSD, I think when we were arranging it and he said, okay, well, you know, I'll, I'll get you access to the early sort of dev build as soon as we put it out. And I said, oh, hell yeah. And then later that year in October, he actually made good on the promise when they started releasing FSD out. I think I was maybe one of the first 200 people to try it. And I remember just getting that phone call from the autopilot team and someone called me and they said, hey, look, we're going to push the FSD beta to your car. I said, fuck yeah, let's go. This is yeah. October 2020. And he said, look, just be careful because it's a little bit crazy, okay? This isn't like normal autopilot. It can do a lot of things, a lot of the rules that autopilot has, like don't turn the wheel too much. It doesn't have those. So it can do really crazy things. I said, don't worry. I've been using autopilot forever. I've seen some shit. I'm ready for it. And they said, okay, great. So we'll send it to you. And so they sent it out to my car. I was in LA at the time and I turned it on and it immediately sharply turned the wheel and dove towards a row of parked cars. And my passenger who was in the car with me, she started screaming. She's like, ah, <laughs> and I disengaged. And so that was the first time I turned it on. I said, okay. And good first I experience. <laughs> and then I centered it in the lane. I turned it on again and it drove forward. You know, it could barely drive straight at the time. It was like going like right and left. Like it was a mess. And then it made, you know, a right turn. And then it made a left turn. And it was the first time I'd ever seen my car make a right turn or a left turn by myself. And I was like, just completely blown away. I was like, wow, it really works. This is huge. Even though now in retrospect, I can see how shitty it was. It was amazing. I was using it all the time, even though it was very, very low quality compared to what we have today. And yeah, over the last almost three years now, um, it's April, you know, October will be three years. So it's about two years and six months. And now it's starting to actually work to the point where back then it was it was a surprise if you had a zero takeover drive, they were very rare. You know, you'd have one maybe like once a month or something, if it was like really simple, easy drive and you got lucky, then you'd be like, oh my God, I had a zero takeover drive. I can't believe it. Now it's like, you're almost starting to expect it and you get angry when there is an issue, at least for me. So the software has progressed a lot, but I mean, we're still at the very early days. I think the people who've experienced it can start to imagine that like, this is gonna completely change the way we use our cars. It's gonna completely change the nature of this product. I mean, it won't even be a car as you know it anymore. It's more just like a robot whose back you can sit on and ride around, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of like when, you know, the computer came and replaced typewriters. Um, and it just added so much more value where the phone came and was replaced by the smartphone. And yeah, our phones still make calls, but you don't normally make a call. I might send you a picture or send you a text message, or I might just like your tweet, right? There's so many more ways to communicate now, rather than just using the phone to actually make a phone call, it completely changed the way we interact with each other. And 
it's the same type of disruption in the car. It's not going to be something you get in and you use the controls anymore and you're pushing buttons. A car in the future is going to be something that maybe you don't even have to own and you just get in, you tell it where you want to go and it takes you there. So the very nature of this product is changing in a really dramatic way. And I think it's just incredible to see the auto industry is facing really three massive disruptions at the same time. Number one, electrification. I mean, this alone is huge, changing the internal combustion engine to batteries. This is a massive change for the industry. But at the same time, really in order to enable that, you have the software defined car. Everything in the car being defined by software, being updatable. This is a major, major change for the automakers. They don't know how to do that. And then on top of that, you have autonomy also happening at the same time. So I think each one of these disruptions could tackle, it could topple a company that's been around for 100 years easily. All three happening at the same time. I mean, this is kind of an unprecedented, uh, unprecedented scenario in business. I don't think anybody's ever seen something quite like this. And people roll their eyes about it a little bit because we've been working on self-driving and working on electrification and working on these things for so long. But there's insane amounts of progress happening. EVs are catching on. They're winning. Autonomous cars are entering the streets. I mean, it's not uncommon at all to see robo-taxis in San Francisco. They're all over the place. Um, and I, I don't think people quite yet appreciate how much these things are going to completely change the way they live every day. I agree 100. percent I think the the light bulb moment went went off for me with the latest version 11 that that we received. Uh, so one of the things I've been doing with my series is I, I do wife tests. So the producer wife gets <laughs> in the car with me, and then uh, we we go around. And the earlier versions. So before I even started doing the videos, where I what I got her brave enough to be like, hey, do you want to freak out? on camera she's like hell no <laughs> so the first few versions were me just going around and having a kind of like a you know okay it's not working here but i can see how i can get there it's not working here but i can see how i can get there and then you know once it got good enough to where i was able to you know uh my wife agreed with me to come on the ride alongs she is you know we capture sort of her a reaction to the car as like sort you know not a tesla nerd like we are and not super embedded in the world but kind of understands what's going on and getting like a very honest take from somebody who is not close to the development of the on the software it's like yeah I, I could see this kind of happening in 10 years and then it was like you know i could see this happening in five years and it's like you know what this could happen in like a in like a year or two and yeah now with the latest versions it's like yeah why can't this happen like like by the end of the year like this seems like it's there and it's like that that comfort level is something that is um, it's come faster than I expected it, you know, because it's it's two uh, to me, it's two different equations. The, the safety thing is one thing that Tesla has to solve for, which is get you from point A to point B as, comf as, as safely as humanly possible. And I want to make sure I don't hit anything or, or uh, put anybody else in danger. So that's one equation. Then the second equation is make sure that the people in the car trust you that you're going to do that thing because those two are very very different right because the behavior of the car in certain spots feels inhuman but it could be very safe and now i'm at the point where you know when my, when my wife and i are not even driving along anymore we're riding along while this car is taking us places we're both like this is kind of weird you know it's like it's just <laughs> we're just chilling in the car having a conversation the car's driving us around. And of course, granted, our roads aren't like, you know, they're not like San Francisco, and, you know, but you're having great drives out there. And they're not mm -hmm. like the Northeast where it's like a mess of roads and it's craziness. I know there's still work to, to do there. But for for most of our of the use cases in America, it seems like self-driving technology is kind of it's like it has some corner cases to go through, but it's 100 percent solvable. And then. And then you're like, okay, but who else can do this? And you're like, wow, it doesn't seem like, you know, Cruise and Waymo can't really go on highways. 
They have to map every single every single uh, city that they're in. Anytime there is road work, they're going to have trouble navigating through it as we've seen it. It's tough to scale because you have to learn every single nook and cranny of the world. Then you also have to make these very expensive cars that probably cost $200,000, $250,000 per car to build out with all these sensors. So like, And then you're like, wow, holy shit. So I'm already being driven around for the last two weeks. This is kind of crazy. And you know, you can conceptually think about it, but then once you experience it, it becomes real. It feels real. And that's been very eye-opening for me in the last two weeks because it 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 proves out that I do I do really do think that Tesla's approach to this thing is the correct one. And the fact that I've essentially stopped driving for the last couple of weeks, I think it's proof. I think it's proof that that's the case. They just need a little bit more time to get the the things ironed out that they need to get ironed out, you know? So it's just yeah. a weird time to be alive. Yeah, I mean, self-driving has to be the hardest software problem ever attempted. Because with software, you can test it against things. But with self-driving, every situation, every drive is unique. No drive will ever happen the same exact way twice. So the software needs to handle everything. And it really is one of those things where you have to see it to believe it. You have to see it working on your own car to really believe that it's even possible. And there have been so many people who've even, I've posted a video, but they say, ah, I don't believe it. It's not working for me yet. So how could it possibly be working for you? You know, there's something going on here or something. And then when they experience it themselves, it then clicks. It's like, oh, okay, this is something that's actually happening. Um, and you see it get more and more human-like over time. It's sort of surprising each time uh, that it is. So really, I think this is going to be something where it's going to just start to far exceed our capabilities, far exceed our perception. Um, you, I've already started noticing it, you know, noticing people or things or traffic lights, for example, faster than I do. Like the light turns green, it starts noticing before I notice it's green. The light turns yellow, it starts slowing before I noticed. It notices a pedestrian before I notice them. Right. Like one time there was somebody crossing. They were right in my sort of a pillar area. So they were blocked. I couldn't see them. But the car stopped. I said, why is it stopped? And then I saw the person come out and I said, oh, wow. OK, so even in this very basic state, you're seeing it already start to exceed humans in some cases. And it's getting to a level of comfort where if you don't tell people it's on, in many cases, they don't even notice that anything's different. It feels human enough that it can sort of pass the Turing test, uh, you know, of autonomy, as I call, as you might call it. So this is, you know, really sort of interesting. I think people really underestimated the difference between 99% and 100%. How much usefulness there is once it gets past 90%, 99%, even though it's not to 100% yet. And really, Tesla is unique in its production capabilities. While everybody else is still in the lab, they're figuring this out. Tesla is making millions of these things around the world. They're gonna make you know around 2 million this year. And now they're building another factory in Mexico that's gonna add millions of more units. So even if Waymo and Cruz really figured it out, how are they gonna get millions of cars out there and starting to perform rides in a meaningful way? Meanwhile, Tesla is actually preventing crashes every day. This is really underappreciated. I mean, you can see some of these videos that Andre Karpathy shares of, say, the active safety features where someone's walking and it stops. Someone's trying to drive into a lake and it says, hey, that's a lake. I'm going to stop it. So it's really powerful to keep to put these features into cars today versus, you know, what Waymo and Cruise are doing. And it's really just hard to see. Who's going to figure out mass production of automated vehicles before Tesla? I think if you don't, it, depending on whether you believe in autonomy or not, Tesla may or may not. Like, if you don't believe in autonomy, what Tesla is doing really makes no sense. But if you do believe that autonomy is inevitable, and it's clear to me now that it is inevitable. I've ridden in driverless cars. I use FSD beta every day. It's happening. It's just a matter of when, not if that's debatable. So if you really believe in autonomy, 
it really changes the way you look at Tesla. And a lot of the things they do start to make more sense.